my new equipment's here. Exciting. Let me turn you around. What we got going on here? Um, EQ6R Pro tripod legs, of course. And the bottom box will be the rest of that um, mount. And then this box, which may contain snow. Thanks, First Light Optics. No snow, but um, potentially, you can't really see out there, potentially uh, a few clear nights in a row coming up, which is good news. Um, this box will have the ZWO ASI Air Plus Pro. I don't know what they're called these days. Um, I didn't buy the Mini, like I said I was going to. I decided to get the uh, bigger one instead. Um, and then there's just some cables and stuff um, along with it as well. And that's all of my new equipment. So the time is now about half past three in the afternoon. So I've got a bit of time to get this all set up, try and get connected to the ASI Air and um, take the gear outside and see if we can get an image out of tonight. Maybe, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Right, so let's head outside. Oh God, it's freezing. Oh. Come on then. <laughs> he has to follow. Oh. God, it's cold. Can you see me? Kind of, that'll do. Um, right, update. This is actually night two with the mount. I was um, so excited to do uh, imaging last night for the first time in ages. Hugo, Hugo's barking at somebody. Um, that uh, I got all set up and then I had every intention of recording how the night went and just uh, completely forgot. So this is actually night two. Um, but that does allow me to give you a quick review of the equipment. So let me spin you around. So I'm using my phone as a torch. Mount EQ6R Pro review. It's an absolute unit, uh, a backbreaker of uh, a bit of equipment. However, I had it set up in all of about 10 minutes, brought it outside, did a polar alignment, and uh, it was absolutely perfect all night long. So really, really impressed um, with that um, ASI Air Plus. You'll know if you watched my Starry Sky News video in November, you'll know that I said I was going to buy the Mini, which had just been announced. Um, I decided to go against that and buy the Plus um, because they had them in stock. Really impressed with that bit of kit. I've got it connected to my home Wi-Fi, absolutely no issues at all. And that all worked, no problem. Um, it's pretty intuitive. I didn't have any issues setting any of that up at all. So I'm going to go ahead and connect all of the cabling and stuff now and do a polar alignment. Um, I haven't actually moved my kit since last night. I've left it out outside all day. So um, that will be a pretty quick setup routine. And then I'll be off imaging again tonight. All right, so I thought I'd give a really quick overview of the ASI Air Plus, just in case you haven't seen it before. So this is the screen that you see when you first log into the ASI Air. It shows information about your location and if you give the app permission to um, use your location then it fills that out automatically. The date and time is of course filled out automatically. And then I have just filled out some information here. So I'm connecting my mount via an EQ mod cable. So uh, I've selected EQ mod mount for that. The main scope I left as zero, as you can see over in the settings tips on the left hand side there um, for plate solving for the first time, I left that as zero, but that is the focal length of my telescope with the field flattener reducer attached. And the 242 is the focal length of my guide scope. And I've then got my main camera, my 533MC Pro and the guide camera. And I am not using an electronic filter wheel or an electronic auto focuser. So then you press enter and it loads you into the main screen. And there are all sorts of things here, but essentially if you click on the preview button there and just work your way down. So the first one is focus and I was looping um, two second exposures here just to get focus. So the star that you can see in the center here that I'm zooming in on is Polaris. So you can see that a two second exposure, I've got the batten off mask on the front of the telescope and it gives you a score, which I think is really, really helpful. 
I struggled with um, seeing this really well because I'm using my phone rather than using my um, tablet or, or anything like that um, because I was just trying to get it set up reasonably quickly. Um, so the screen was obviously quite small so I did struggle with this um, a little bit and apologies that the app hasn't filled the video screen completely uh, which is quite annoying but um, never mind. Um, what I'd also done from last night is I'd set up the cooling of my camera so that while I'm going through all of this setup you can see along the bottom there that the camera is cooling and I had it set to minus 15 and then you can see now that I've taken the baton off mask off the peak value is getting higher as it says the higher the value is the better and the star size the lower the value the better you can see that that has gone down from what it was before as well so now i've quit out of that screen on the focus and stopped the exposures and you can see i've got my camera gain set to 100 that's unity gain for this camera my cooling is turned on to minus 15 I was just double checking that that was actually happening and now I'm going to move from the focus tab to the polar align tab and the ASI air is awesome because it tells you everything that you need to do so essentially have your mount set to its home position connect the main camera and mount and then hit the play button uh, to start your plate solve and I realized at this point that not only had I not turned the mount on in the app but I hadn't actually turned the power switch on on the EQ6R either so I had to go out and uh, sort that out and then once I turned the mount on I forgot to actually record my screen uh, when doing the polar alignment so apologies for uh, missing that but the ASI Air Plus walks you through um, those steps. Once you've polar aligned you can then look at the Sky Atlas to slew to your target and then go onto the preview tab to look at how your target is looking in your field of view and from there you can either go on to your auto run or onto your plan and here you can see that i'd uh, set up for 15 darks and some light frames and i wanted to just remove the dark frames because i'd already captured those from the night before and here i've just changed the name from the california nebula back to the heart nebula because the california nebula was causing me some issues with my guiding but you can see here that is a five minute exposure of the Heart Nebula on the ASI Air Plus. Well, this is a bit of a boring background, isn't it? Um, there you go, some pictures up there, some fluffy animals. Um, so as you can see, the ASI Air is pretty intuitive. Uh, guess who? The only issue that I really encountered was with the um, plate solving when I was trying to do the polar alignment and the same thing had happened the night before as well. I don't know why it was an issue, but it was an issue. That's the only issue that I've encountered so far. And I, I don't know what the problem really is with that. Um, I'm sure I'll do some Googling and get to the bottom of that. No problem at all. Um, it could have been a connection issue at, at the time, although I've got my mount, uh, although I've got my ASI Air set to station mode, which piggybacks off my home Wi-Fi, uh, but for some reason it has connected it via the ASIS hotspot, so uh, perhaps that was why. Um, I don't really know, to be honest, but um, either way, it's working now, and that's the main thing. There's always lots to learn when using new equipment, of course, and speaking of learning new things, let's hear from the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. I've been using Skillshare for advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro by Jordi Vanderput, who has over 2 million subscribers on YouTube. I'm always looking for ways to deliver better content for you and even after three years of Astro Exploring I still struggle to edit videos and I think I only understand a small part of Adobe Premiere. Learning advanced techniques from an established filmmaker and successful YouTuber will mean I'm able to provide better quality content for you, the viewer. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. With a Skillshare membership you can engage in your hobbies and passions all year long. It's the perfect way to start and finally keep your resolutions for the new year. Why not make 2023 the year you perfect a new creative hobby, land a new career, or launch your own business? The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description down below will get a free 30-day trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, if you've stuck with the video this far, then thank you. I never know how long these videos are going to be. They, I, I record them for anywhere 
from half an hour upwards and then whittle it down to like a 10, 15 minute video at the most. Um, so thank you for sticking with it if you're still here. And because you're still here, you get the benefit of me now rambling on about looking forward to 2023 and what that means for Astro Exploring. So I'm gonna be really honest, I think Astro Exploring might look quite different next year. I've really struggled to keep up this year, you know, full-time job, new baby, um, life is busy. Um, so trying to churn out video week after week, particularly on an astro astrophotography channel when the weather <laughs> is terrible. Uh, it's really hard coming up with new content all the time when I can't do videos like this very often. And these are the videos that I prefer to do the most. So I put myself under a lot of pressure to come up with weird and wonderful ideas for videos. And sometimes that's really easy. Sometimes that's a struggle, but um, to be honest, it's gotten to the end of the year and I am absolutely knackered um, and I need a break. So um, I think for the first couple of months of 2022, I don't think I'm really gonna look at YouTube very much. I have some videos that I do need to do. I've got some equipment reviews that I need to do and I have a sponsored video to do in January. So you'll see the odd one or two videos for the first couple of months, but I think um, I will be taking um, a reasonably extended break from YouTube for a while and I'm probably going to focus more on my website. And as I'm saying this, I'm stroking Hugo. Can you, you probably can't see his fluff it's just coming off in my hand and going everywhere. Um, I'm probably going to focus more on my website. I really neglect my website and I know that a lot of people find my channel through my website and a lot of people find my website and look for answers on there when looking for things on Google. So um, at the minute, there's not a huge amount of information on there. So I want to put more information on my website, which means that uh, I just don't really have the time for YouTube at the minute. And honestly, a lot of the time when I've been filming these videos, I've not really been into it. Um, so I think I just need a break and I'll come back at some point in the new year uh, with some new content and hopefully you'll still be around to enjoy it. With that being said, it's not goodbye. I'm still here. As I said, I'll still be active on social media. I'll still be doing astrophotography if there are clear nights. I've got some videos to still do, as I've said. So it's, it's not goodbye, just a bit of a temporary hiatus with the odd video thrown in between. With that being said, thank you so much for supporting this channel. The new equipment that I'm using tonight is solely down to the revenue that Astro Exploring has made, whether that's through adverts or affiliate links or whatever. Um, I wouldn't be able to have bought this new equipment without all of you watching these videos. So a huge thank you to everybody that has subscribed or watched a video or done anything that has interacted with Astro Exploring over the last couple of years. I really, really do appreciate it. Now, Back to astrophotography, I am on the Hart Nebula. I was going to do the California Nebula. The guide scope was struggling with the brightness of the moon because the California Nebula is right by the moon tonight and it's a full moon. So I, I was taking a chance, but it's just not worked. So I've gone back to the Hart Nebula and I will image that all night if I can. I've got 12 hours of astro dark at the minute and the Hart Nebula is available for me to image all night. It's not gonna disappear from the field of view, so that's excellent. Clouds may stop play like they did last night for several hours. However, I'm hoping that I can just get as many hours in as possible, and I will hopefully have a really good image to share with you at the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.